gets absorbed right out of the feet, winds up charging up some electrons in the pigment molecule. The pigment molecule, the next source of electrons out, they the, well, actually electrons just bounce out, they don't even wait. They just bounce all over the place, and while they bounce, the water gets hit. The water gets split into hydrogen that gets picked up by the carrier, and oxygen that winds up binding with another oxygen in the tube, and then it goes out. Carrier in a DP picks up the hydrogen, picks up the electrons, carries them on to the stroma where the dark reaction will occur. ATP molecules are being made through the process of our energy being used for ATP molecules. They also leave, go out, go to the stroma where they'll be used for the dark reaction. The dark reaction happens, CO2 comes in, we have three molecules come in one at a time. They connect to a five carbon structure, the root. The root with the CO2 breaks and becomes two three carbon structures that we call PGAL. PGAL gets hit. Gets hit with some hydrogen. And the next thing you know, you've got G3P. That happens again. You get a second G3P. Those two G3Ps brought together, you get glucose. Glucose gets kicked out.
radiotropes. This structure here is the second beam called the mitochondria. And it also has these coils. But notice these coils is one long line coil. Here I've got stacks of coils. Chloroplast has stacks of coils. The stacks of coils, this one stack, as Maya just said, is called one. There are no stacks in this one. This one just has a long line of coil membrane. That membrane also is made up of phosphorylates. So, thank you. I'll stay. Thanks. Did you sign? Yes. Thank you. Okay. This, this membrane that's inside of here, also made up of phospholipids. The membrane on the outside, phospholipids. The membrane on the outside of the chloroplast, phospholipids. The membrane on the inside, the deliquid membrane, phospholipids with chloroplast. With Chloroplast. You with me? Making sense? Everybody okay? Yes. Yeah. So there are two members in the There's one long membrane. Outside, look. Outside, inside. One. Right, right. So it just continues. It's on the outside, and then it just continues. Yes, sir. Is, there, is it also a bilayer? Yes. The interior is bilayer. The exterior is bilayer. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, wait, yes. You're saying the outside of the chloroplast? The outside bilayer? of the thalacoid? I'm sorry. Outside of the chloroplast? No, chlorophyll. I mean, I mean, like, can you, did you say something about the, you said something about the chloroplast being the outside? The chloroplast has a membrane on the outside, too. A bit. Look, that, that membrane on the outside, no chloroplast. I'm sorry. No pigment, no chlorophyll. This membrane, no chlorophyll. But, look, watch my finger, Jason. But on the inside of this, of the chloroplast, chlorophyll, chlorophyll, chlorophyll. On the outside, none. And notice, when I did the chlorop when I did the chloroplast, I didn't say membrane, and then thalacoid, continue it. I stop. I break the line because the thalacoid is not the same as the membrane on the outside because there's no chlorophyll in the membrane that's on the outside. Yes. So in the autotroph, there, there's one um, chloroplast and one mitochondria. So there are two of those. Two. That's right. Inside of the auto, did everybody get a little sick? Inside of the autotroph. There's the chloroplast, there's the chloro, there's the mitochondria. Inside of the autotroph, what's the matter, Mike? You, you, you're good, you got it, okay. Inside the chloroplast, when you do that puzzle book, I'm thinking something wrong. So inside of, inside of, the, inside of the autotroph cell, chloroplast, mitochondria. Us? Heterotrophs? I thought chlorophyll was like used to make people go to sleep. Chloroform. Oh. Chloroform. I got it. Dead is the nerves. Dead is the nerves. Okay. And I think it's because it's got chlorine in it, but it's called chloroform. What is the uh, 
prefix chloro mean? Chlor, C H L O R O, usually means color or light color. But then we have chlorine, it also has the C H L O R, and that's what I think the form is made out of chlorine. Ah, I see. Because that's why it has that beginning sound. Yes. Then why is it that when we swim, we don't like it tired? Why what now? Like when we swim in a pool, like why doesn't it like deaden our nerves? The chlorine is bonded to some other stuff. I see. Not everything that's in chloroform is in the pool. Okay. So it's not acting like chloroform in your body. I see. Okay. All right. Okay, moving forward. So backtracking, I'm still doing a little bit of review and teaching you at the same time. You know that the phallocoid absorbs light energy, electrons bouncing, water is being dismantled. You know that in the stroma, CO2 is going to be used to make P3P. Let's examine the mitochondria from that perspective. So just to recap here, Raise a little bit of this off, so as I do the new stuff, we won't throw you off. Can I tell you something about splitting this class in half? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right now, I'm down to one student who's going to be in that alternative group. They'll have a different kind of uh, quiz, take, tech. I might even give them The rest of you, I think we're going to be able to keep things as it is. Yes. And we're about to speak to that student very shortly today. All right, so what you know so far is that the phallocoid itself is the location where light energy comes in. You know that. Pigment absorbs that whole part. What I'm hoping you know right now is that look at the screen. Water is getting kicked out. Light's going in, and water is getting kicked out of the phallocoid. is that CO2, look at the screen, CO2 is going into the space, the stroma. That's what I hope you remember. And I'm hoping that you remember, look at the screen, <coughs> that glucose is coming out as a three carbon structure, half of the glucose, not the whole glucose. It's going to happen twice. G3P is three carbon. You got that, Jacob? Yes. You remember that part. Okay? Everybody's good, right? Okay? Here's the news. Watch the screen. I'm going to leave this up so you can copy it if you need to, but I just don't want to lose you. So, during this second process, which I haven't told you the name of everything yet, six carbon glucose, I'm outside right now, six carbon glucose gets split into a three carbon and a three carbon. The three, look, 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 look. The three carbon is going into the fluid. There's a fluid in the mitochondria. Okay, look, 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 look. From that fluid is going to come some ATP some N-A-D-H. <coughs> what? What are you trying to tell us? Okay, watch. The membrane that's inside, okay, going in is going to be N-A-D-H. Wait, wait, hold on. Going in is going to be F A D H. Going in is going to be O two gas. Let's go back up to the previous picture. Yes, 
One at a time. And remember, look at the screen right here. One of the three C's was coming out to make the G. The G to repeat to make the glucose and the scarlet backwards. Okay, I said yes. Yes. So to get split initially. He's asking about this one. That one right there. On the outro. So it's just like floating around. It came from the chloroplast. <coughs> Jacob? Does the structure will go down with where the usually comes out and goes back to the He's asking if the H2O that comes out of one goes back in. Because H2O comes out of the mitochondria. And if this happens to be an autotroph, some of that H2O might wind up going back in to the chloroplast. To, uh, going to actually come out from the <coughs> fluid area, which is right here, and go back in to the membrane, which is here. This is the abbreviated version. About to get more detail in just a second. I'm just doing this to show you some similarities. The membrane of the top one, the chloroplast, Oxygen. Water. What's coming out? Water and ATP, which has what? What's trapped inside the ATP? 3GP. In what form though? They're electrons, but what, what, do, they, what do they have in there? The electrons carry what with them? H. Phosphate. 
third phosphate, why is it there? Why is it ATP instead of ADP? Why is that phosphate able to do what it does? What's in that ATP molecule? What do we use it for majority of the time? Okay. So coming from the membrane in the mitochondria, this chemical energy, in the form of ATP, going into the membrane of the light reaction of the chloroplast is light energy. So one is absorbing the concentration, the other is taking out, releasing high concentrations of energy. Yes, sir. What uh, <coughs> comes out releasing high amounts of energy? What, say, say one more time. Uh, what releases high amounts of energy? Uh, membrane of the mitochondria is releasing high quantities of what kind of energy? Chemical. Chemical energy. The membrane of the chloroplast is absorbing what? High concentrations of light. What does it have in it that allows it to absorb that energy, by the way? What do I have to have to have to be able to absorb light energy? That look quite okay. One does, one does not. That look quite, yes. The other membrane, I have given you the name of it, it doesn't. Let me give you the name of the other membrane. The other membrane is called, this membrane that's inside of the mitochondria is called I have my pictures, my slides, and stuff as well. It's called crystal. Are we good? Raven, you good? Okay, 
So the CO2 goes to G3P and then to 3GP? CO2 goes to 3PGALs and then to G3P. PGAL is also made of, it's made of three carbons. And you group in the PGAL is three carbons and G3P is three carbons. G3P is what leaks out. My so where do the leftover CO2s go from the C3 pyruvates? Um, pyruvates, the other CO2s? The, the ones at the bottom? Yeah, the three of them. You exhale. What? You exhale. They leave. Wait, so they just don't like go to the air. You exhale. Or the organism exhales.
Which one are we? <coughs> H. That's G3P. Every place where you see a joint where there's no alphabet, there's no alphabet in those joints. Carbon, carbon, carbon. Okay. So I said P. I said G3P on those, those threads. But it also has all of this, 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 and that. Now, this this part right here means it's going back. Behind, and they can't do this. Is a two dimensional representing a three dimensional structure. So, this is G3P. Yay. I'm not going to take it off. I'm try to do this with more than one screen. You don't need to draw this. Aww. Pirate pie 
When glucose is being made, this whole phosphate falls off. There's going to be a double bond here between that oxygen and carbon. You're going to have some more hydrogens coming off. So like, for example, this carbon right here, right now only has three bonds made. So another hydrogen is going to be here. And if you look here, you've got carbon. This carbon right here, it actually has a hydrogen here, here, and here, making three hydrogens. That's why this three is here. You have this carbon right here is satisfied. It has all four of its bonds. This one is unstable. That's why you have these dotted lines here. And in that negative charge, there's an electron, an extra electron floating back and forth between these. And so if there happened to be a hydrogen, hydrogen bonded here, that extra electron would stay here. You would need to have two hydrogens, or you would need to have a double bond here. So that oxygen is happy, which means another hydrogen might settle here. And it's, it's unstable, that's why it doesn't stay where it stays too long. And bottom line is that they both have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It's the arrangement of the carbon here. The, the single bond is here. And then you have a double bond here, a double bonded oxygen. And oxygen is double bonding back and forth with that carbon. Here, we've got a double bonded oxygen, a double bonded oxygen, and a single uh, bond in the middle. Double bond, double bond, single on the end matters. It matters. Same atoms. Location of the double bonds, location of other things on the structure changes its properties. This comes from glucose. This bonds together to make glucose. This one right here, you start off with a six carbon and you get two pyruvates. Split. <laughs> Here you start with G3P twice. They merge together to give you glucose. Glycolysis. Dark reaction, Calvin cycle.
Okay, so the first part of this is called glycolysis. During glycolysis, I showed you in the drawing, the glucose molecule gets look, 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 split, and you wind up having two structures. Each one of them has three carbons. So here I start off with six carbons. And I'm going to go fast, I'm skipping over some stuff. At the end of it all, you have two, explain, you have two three carbon structures called pyruvates. And what's happening in the middle? The six carbon structure, look at the screen. I don't have to write this, this is not something I took. This part, I'm about to say, I don't know if you remember. The glucose in the middle, I'm sorry, in the, in the cytoplasm, glucose in the cytoplasm gets hit with ATP dropping on phosphate. So the glucose is going to wind up having phosphate connected to it. <coughs> the six carbon or the end carbon is going to have phosphate. That end carbon keeps its phosphate and some double, a double bonded oxygen gets shifted around. It stays with the molecule, it gets shifted around. So instead of having glucose with the phosphate, I have a sugar called fructose. When we get into carbs, which is in January, we'll learn about fructose. The fructose picks up um, another phosphate. And that fructose becomes not just a six carbon with phosphate, but it actually gets heavy. It splits right here into a two, uh, two three carbon structures, picks up some more phosphates. Each of those three carbons picks up a phosphate. This should look familiar too. Look at this screen. Look at this screen. What is this? It's missing a P. It really is. It's supposed to be NAD. Okay. What do you know about NAD? B H. Your what? NAD P H. What do you know about that? It picks up two electrons. picks up electrons and hydrogen. NAD P picks up electrons and hydrogen to become NADPH. So what do you think NAD does? What do you think? No. So yes. No. Yes. No. No. Yes? No. So what else did they have to pick up in order to be able to get to connect to that age? What did this pick up as it was getting connected to the age? Hydrogen. This is a carrier. Just like this is a carrier. What do we call it when you're losing electrons? Reduction. You're gaining electrons. Reducing molecule. Reduction. What do we call it when you're losing electrons? Oxidation. Oxidation. Watch the screen. This molecule lost electrons and hydrogens. They got picked up by the NADH. This was oxidized. This was reduced. Phosphate's going to get picked up by ADP. ATP is going to be made. Over some more changes where bonds are being rearranged and shifted, double bonds going from one place to another. 
you finally get to that pyrule, which is what I showed you on the screen. Go. This is cardamom. Do not.